There's a really fascinating interview in the New York Times that we wanted to bring to you. So this is with um, Dayton, Ohio Mayor Nan Whaley. Now, she's being talked about as a possible Democratic contender for that new- newly opened Rob Portman seat. He's retiring from his Senate seat. Um, Republicans, it looks like Jim Jordan may jump in, maybe J.D. Vance. There's a bunch of Republican congressmen. That primary is going to be super hot. On the Democratic side, there's been some, you know, maybe Tim Ryan, maybe mm-hmm. this mayor, maybe the lady who was sort of like in charge of the um, COVID response in the state. There's some questions, more questions on the Democratic side. But the reason we found this interesting is because Her points that she made in this interview about why Democrats have lost Ohio and what they could do to get it back are just so basic, but also so on the nose. Now, I want to say, let's go ahead and throw the chair sheet up on the screen. I want to say, I don't really know anything about Nan Whaley. I Mm -hmm. do know she endorsed Mayor Pete in the Democratic primary. So take it all with a little bit of like a grain of salt. But her answers here are 100 percent spot on and track with what we've been talking about. Who's the one Democrat who's able to succeed in the state of Ohio? Sherrod Brown. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated. He's super focused on labor, on wages, on unions, on jobs, like the things that really impact people's day-to-day lives. And that's exactly what she talks about in this piece. I think you have one of the quotes here that really sums up her perspective. Absolutely. There was a great question that the Times Journalist asked. Do you think Obama's success in Ohio gave people an unrealistic sense of how purple it is? Or do you think Trump's strength here has given people an unrealistic sense of how red it is? She answers. I think what people forget about Ohio is it's an economic populist state and it's economic populism is why Sherrod does so well here. When, Sherrod does so well here. When Trump was like $2,000 stimulus checks for everyone, I was like, absolutely. I agree with Trump. That's right. Here's the money quote. What people want in Ohio, it's not complicated. They want to work and they want to get paid decent for that work. It's not rocket science. And over three decades, both parties have not been paying attention to that. And what she talks about and makes it even better point is that with the Democratic Party, just a lot of times the elitism comes off of the coats. And that is a major challenge. Yes. She also said one of the challenges in our party is we have a lot of smart people and everyone wants to be the smartest in the room. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we be focused on what makes people's lives better, even if it's a regular person's idea? I mean, it's so simple. And it reminds me of, by the way, I, I used to live in Ohio and actually the, you know, my politics today were really informed by my time living there because I lived in this little town. It's called East Liverpool. You can look it up. Used to be the pottery capital of the world. All the like Mm. dishes and plates and stuff were made in this town, over 200 potteries. That basically all went overseas more or less in sort of like the 50s and 60s to China. Um, There's still a few holdouts there. And then there was a steel mill in yep. the neighboring town, large steel mill. And you could get, a, you could, you know, graduate high school, go over there, get a good union middle class job. Wasn't going to be anything fancy, but you were able to provide for your family. Now that, of course, has gone away too. And the town is just, you know, it's devastated. It was a place that has really struggled and been one of the epicenters of the opioid crisis. And what really got me living there is if you go up and down the Ohio River, it's town after town after town that can tell a very, very similar story. And people are just completely screwed. That's also a part of Ohio that used to be a strongly Democratic area. And then when I was living there, it went hard right, like Tea Party right, Mm -hmm. and has been part of this massive shift to the Republican Party. So one of the things that Democrats do, rather than saying, like, how do we win them back, is they just basically go like, well, I guess we can't win Ohio anymore. Let's try for Arizona instead. Maybe the demographics are more favorable. Rather than ever going, hey, you know, like, we've had politician after politician traipse through here, make a lot of promises, and then end up at the end of their tenure, people are just more screwed over than ever before. So I think she makes an incredible point. Look, when you've broken trust with a population, it's not like that just comes back overnight. But if you actually want to not only win places like Ohio, but actually do things that are going to better people's lives, she gives some pretty solid advice here. Yeah, and there's, there's so many good quotes here. They're like, what do you think people in Ohio need to see from Biden in the next year? She's just like, we, they need a rescue package. They need to see something that's different, and it's moving quickly. They need to see they don't have to worry every month or whether or not they're going to get bailed out at the last minute on unemployment and eviction, even though it's no fault of their own that a pandemic happened and that they happen to work frontline jobs that people can't go to now because the pandemic is raging and that we've got their back. Here's the other question. Do you think people care about it being bipartisan? No, they want it fast. Nobody cares what happens in D.C. and who voted what. 
They just want it done, and we should provide that. They don't care about the filibuster. Yeah, they don't care about how bipartisan it was. They don't care if you have to vote to overrule the Congressional Budget Office in the Senate parliamentary. No. They care if they have a job, if they have health care, if they have wages where they can support their family, if they have maybe some union representation that will help ensure those things can happen. And um, Democrats have really lost sight of all of that. I think it was Max Alvarez who made the point of, like, they don't even try to win these states mm -hmm. back. They just assume that it's gone, that these people are unreachable, that you can't possibly. Now they're like Trump cultists, even though they just voted for Obama not so long ago. And they just abandon them and move on to center the interest of these affluent suburban elites who are moving strongly yeah. into the party. It's really not complicated. Very much so. Really interesting interview, worth reading the entire thing. And we'll have more rising for you after this.